Today, we're gonna show you why this coffee table build failed and why it warped so bad that this marble can run from end to end. The initial idea came from having these excess Live Edge one side pieces of wood. We thought it would be a good idea to take our coffee table form and place all these Live Edge pieces with the Live Edge facing up and then pour epoxy over top of it so you have this sort of partial wood, partial epoxy tabletop that's a little less traditional than the usual river tables that we make. Since we didn't have a good way of clamping these down, we just decided to use a few beads of silicone to hold these in place. At this point, we still thought we had a pretty foolproof plan and we didn't think this was gonna turn into a thousand dollar mistake. Once the wood was in place, we had to mix up our epoxy. We're using Ecopoxy Flowcast here. It's a two to one mix and is perfect for deeper pours. Once the epoxy was mixed up, it was time to add our pigment and we went with the Dragon's Breath, which has a unique color shift. So it changes color depending on which angle you look at it. You can see that color shift during the mixing process here. You kind of have that light purple and you get some reds in there, which makes for a really unique finished product. Now it's time to head over to the vacuum chamber so we can pull all those micro bubbles out. We normally leave it in the vacuum chamber for about 10 minutes to, to pull all those bubbles. Once it comes out of the vacuum chamber, we'll hit it with a heat gun just to remove those surface bubbles. You can really see the color come to life once those surface bubbles are removed. Now it's time to pour. This pour was about 18 liters, which cost about $550. And at this point, we still thought our idea was foolproof and we thought we were gonna have a pretty unique finished piece. During this stage here, you can start to visualize what the end product might look like with that medium opaque epoxy in some areas with wood being exposed in other areas. Once the pour is complete, we run back over it with the heat gun just to remove those surface bubbles so we can have a good look at what's going on. We are just using a heat gun here, but you could also use a blow dryer or a torch. It doesn't really matter how much heat you give it. You just want to give it a light pass of, of warm air. At this point, you can see the epoxy starting to cure and you kind of see those unique characteristics that form as the epoxy cures. Once the epoxy cures, it's time to take it out of the form. So you can see us giving it a few taps here to get it out of the form. This one took a few extra taps considering we had silicone the wood down where normally we would clamp the pieces down. So after a little bit more attention, we finally got that piece loose. Next up, we threw it on our CanCam CNC to flatten it. And at this point, we still thought we were in good shape and didn't see any issues with the project. Once it came off the CNC, we squared it up and sanded it up to 150 grit before adding a quarter inch bevel. Normally we do a round over, but we wanted to switch it up and try something new. Then we go back to sanding and bring that piece right up to 220 grit before we apply finish. We always make sure we wipe off the excess sawdust before we oil. And at this point, we still hadn't noticed any major issues with the piece, and we were pretty pumped when we saw that color shift pop out when the oil was applied. So we were still feeling pretty good about this one at this point, but uh, shortly after it was finished, we noticed that the piece started to warp. And the reason that the piece started to warp is because we had uneven exposure of wood on the top and the bottom. On the top, you can see that layer of epoxy covering about 95% of it where the underside is 100% wood with just an oil finish. We often get asked if it's important to finish both sides of your piece and you know regardless of using an oil finish or epoxy finish it is important to finish both sides of your piece using the same finish where essentially the top of this table was finished with epoxy and the underside was finished with just oil which created that uneven finish and allowed it to warp. From this angle here, you can really see how warped it is. So it's definitely not a functional table of any sort now. Uh, the piece is two foot by four foot by about inch and three quarter thick. So if you've got any ideas on what to do with this, let us know in the comments. When you place a marble on the piece, you can really see how warped the table is. Anyways, let us know what you would do with this piece. We don't really wanna just throw it out. So if you've got a creative idea that we can transform this thing, we'd love to hear them.